You talking to me? Hello, everybody. Hi. Welcome, Facebook people. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. I cook along with us. We're live on Facebook. Hello. We're so excited because we have a few people who are cooking with us for the first time. So we have Monique, who I think is doing the, the, the crepes, right? Yeah. And then Anna is doing both. Yes. And then we have Roy and Julie from Maryland, I think, who's also doing both. And another new cook alonger <laughs> is Mavic. So Mavic, we're waiting on you. Um, Mavic is from here. <laughs> I don't know where from here, but happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Welcome to our kitchen. This is Seven with Chad Marvy. So again, uh, oops. By the way, today's edition is the only <laughs> time that we are deviating from seven ingredients because it's our Thanksgiving special. So yes. we are actually uh, using more, right? Yes. So while we actually did the simplified paella about a couple of months ago, mm -hmm. the Valenciana that we're making today is not simplified at all. Like we said, um, like we announced last Sunday, this is going to be like the full blown version of how we make it. And my hubby fondly calls it Marvis Valenciana. <laughs> but I wasn't the one who came up with the recipe. It was him. Yeah, so just a little <laughs> bit of a background. Um, Arroz Valenciana is actually a, a Filipino dish, okay, from the city where my dad was born. Um, so it's typically uh, cooked separately. They cook their coconut rice uh, separately, and then they cook all their meats and vegetables separately, then they mix it all together. This was obviously inspired by, um, you know, the colonizers, <laughs> the Spaniards who came over to our country. Uh, and so this uh, recipe is just passed on from generation to generation. Today, what we're teaching you is the salad master way, where it's actually easier because we lot. cook it all together yes. and we cook it in less than an hour. Yes. So uh, that's the difference. And we call it Marvis Valenciana because you'll see some of the elements are non-traditional. Mm -hmm. But again, with this dish, you can play around. Use whatever meats you want. Mm -hmm. Use whatever uh, seasonings you want. So if you're interested in um, getting a copy of some sort of a recipe, you're going to have to message us because this recipe you won't find anywhere in the internet. Okay? It's our own recipe, courtesy of him. <laughs> so to start right. off, uh, let's all preheat our... Um, We're using our electric, electric oil, oil skillet. skillet. The 275. 275. Mavic. Um, if you're listening to me, um, I'm thinking you're probably on Facebook. Preheat your EOC to 275, okay? Everybody preheating their pre EOC? So the way we're going to do this today is here. We're going to start with the Valenciana, okay? And then while we're waiting for this to cook, we're gonna to transition to the crepes because the crepes is incredibly simple, okay? Monique, this is something that you're going to want to make over and over. I was telling my good friend, Monique, um, you're gonna to want to make a big batch of this. I love this particular version of um, our crepes. We have several versions if you don't know us yet. We have several versions of crepes, but this is my personal favorite. It's gluten-free and very high in protein content because we use a lot of eggs. So I don't mind eating a lot of these. <laughs> okay. So I did check and Mavic is with us on Facebook Live. So hi Mavic, uh, we are using our EOC for our uh, Arroz Valenciana. So please preheat it to 275. I'm not sure if you heard it because I just saw your, your message. Um, and we want to say hi to those who've tuned in as well, like Grace Kumar. Thanks for joining us, Grace. Hello. So while we're preheating, what's going to happen next time? Okay, so once you've preheated it, uh, we're going to go ahead and um, saute our onions. So we start with our onions because we're not using any oil today. Mm -hmm. uh, and that provides the moisture um, right. as a base for our garlic. Okay, right. so let's go ahead and uh, add in our onions. So this is one big difference. Um, not that you cannot use oil, but with the salad master way of cooking, we try to avoid as much as possible using um, a lot of oil, especially if it's not the big kind, okay? But please feel free if you want to use avocado or olive oil. So we did say one cup of uh, diced nice. onion. This is just one onion for us. So it's a little bit more than a cup. 
but I'm gonna go ahead and close it so that I'll trap the moisture in. Leave it for about a couple of minutes. Um, there you go. Yeah, so Mikael can go back to the main camera actually. Uh, yeah, so what, uh, in the meantime, let's go ahead and um, rinse our rice. We're using two cups of uh, sweet sticky rice. There's many variations. You could, I don't know if you're using glutinous rice or jasmine rice or red rice. I know Mavic is using red rice. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and rinse your rice. I, I pre-rinsed ours. Uh, and go ahead and season your, um, your chicken, if you're using chicken. Um, add salt and pepper to your taste, okay? And uh, I also did that just a few minutes ago. Um, so whatever protein or meat you're using, you're going to have to slightly season that with your salt and pepper, yep. okay? So whatever meat except your chorizo or Chinese sausage. Is anybody using um, chorizo or Spanish or Bilbao? Is there anyone using that? Okay, Roy and Julie, what are you using? What is that, Roy? Sorry, I can't quite see it. Spanish sausage. Bilbao. Spanish, Bilbao, okay. okay. So that is already like um, seasoned, so you don't have to season mm -hmm. that. Today, we are using chicken, shrimps, and Chinese sausage, right? Okay. So I haven't seasoned my shrimp though, so I'm gonna mm -hmm. go ahead and season my shrimp. So the beauty of this version is here, um, you guys. You can use whatever type of protein you want. One all the way up to four or as many as you can, as many as you want. I have, I've given you a list um, of choices in the ingredient list that I sent earlier, but you're pretty much welcome to add whatever. Okay, you can have mussels. Some people use clams even. Some people use um, your favorite, honey, scallops. Yeah. See? So yeah, uh, in the Philippines, they use- whatever. Obviously we're a, a country of several islands, so we have a lot of seafood and we just add whatever is available, right? In your, in your um, fridge. So seasoning everything while we're waiting on our onions to kind of like cook. A and then bit. a little okay. bit. All right, so let's check our onions. Checking our onions. So I see the moisture build up already, which is good. Oh. Did I say 275? It should be 375. My bad. I know. I was wondering why <laughs> is it so low? I'm like, oh, oh honey. it's not cooking. Sorry. Let's bring it up to 375, which would be around uh, medium in your stovetop. That's my bad. We're having some technical difficulties here. Do you, do you see? No, I, was I was trying to do what I was trying to do what you kept on saying, but it doesn't do it here. Ah. Okay, maybe we should stop eating this thing. Okay, no, because it was about to hit your head, honey. Okay. You're tall. All right. So you hear the sizzle? Mm -hmm. um, I do see the moisture now. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my garlic, my minced garlic, two tablespoons of minced garlic. Mavic, please let us know that you got the um, instruction. Sorry about that. Here we go. Okay, hi to Abignang. And um, I can't see, there's a couple of people joining us, but uh, I can't really see your names. Thanks for joining us. We are making a Ross Valenciana today along with dessert cakes. So I'm just gonna saute this until uh, my garlic is a little bit brown. See, we don't need oil because the onions itself produce a lot of water. Right. Hi, Lita, Lita, Nara. I had fun um, chatting with Lita over the past weekend because she had some questions about our purple yam, but she's all the way in the Philippines. Thank you for joining us today. All right, so now we're just sauteing, making sure that these two spices are well cooked, okay? Yep. Okay. At 375 um, on, in your EOC. But is there any pre-work needed for the crepes? No, but I wanna make mention, if you're watching us and you wanna do this traditionally, well, the only thing that you have to do is actually make sure that you're using a pan that is pretty much shallow, 
okay? The one thing unique about you doing paella or valenciana is that you're supposed to cook this dish in a shallow pan, all right? So, but pretty much the same um, procedure to this point. You're sauteing, first your onion and then your garlic. Now, traditionally you do onion before garlic, right? We're just doing it <laughs> like flipped because with the EOC of Salad Master, we don't use any oil. And we're trying to make use of the garlic, of the onion moisture to cook the garlic afterwards. Okay, it smells so good now. Um, my garlic isn't quite browning yet, so I'm gonna keep this a little bit more. All right, so Monique, for those who are using or who are also doing the crates, the only other thing that you need to um, get ready is your um, blender, okay? You're going to need your blender, okay? So everyone, this is another thing I love about the crepes that we're going to make. It's so easy. <laughs> it is so easy to make it. And because crepes are incredibly expensive, <laughs> I'm like, I love that I can make my own. <laughs> Okay, so get your blender ready. Go, honey. I'm still waiting. <laughs> still waiting. We're still waiting on our onion and garlic to cook at 375. So in your regular stove top, that will be like medium heat or a little bit above your medium heat. Not quite medium high, just a little bit above your medium heat. Okay. And we're not using any tomato today. So that's a uh, paella would use uh, tomato. Usually, um, yeah, yes, we, usually. we don't. So this one just requires chicken stock and um, coconut, coconut milk. milk. Yeah. Okay, I'm now ready to saute my uh, chicken. So if you're using chicken or some kind of raw meat, go ahead and saute your uh, your meats now. Okay. So depending on what kind of meat you're using, if it's a combination, obviously the very first thing that we're going to cook will be the one that's going to require longer cooking, the toughest. If you happen to have some pork, the pork is going to be the first to go in. If, you're ha if you happen to be using some beef cutlets, then obviously, or strips, it's going to be the beef, okay? So whichever is the longest to cook is what's going to go in first. <laughs> And you can just add salt and pepper to taste. Um, yeah, I'm gonna uh, add, uh, sorry, go ahead. Is there a I'm question? I'm sorry, Amina had a question. Okay. It, you want me to read it? Sure. <laughs> she, she wants to know why she, you can't use oat milk. Oh. Oat milk with the- uh, For the crepes? You'll have to ask oh, her. She put the, the question in the box. Is using because she's doing another kind of um, crates, right? The oat milk, because the oat milk makes it so dry, Anna. It's because it's also starchy. It's amina. Oh, is it amina? Mm -hmm. Oh, amina. You can actually use oat milk, except that you're going to have to lessen the amount of your pancake or flour that you're using. We tried okay. oat milk. Honestly, it's harder for it to bind, like uh, as smoothly as uh, a, a normal crepe. And because it's also like a lot of starch as a base, then it does make it drier. So you're going to have to lessen the amount of flour or pancake mix that you use with it. But you can Cheers. use any. It was just a personal preference that I don't want to use oat milk. <laughs> as soon as the chicken has started to change color, then you could add your chorizo. Mm -hmm. She put another question in the box, um, Marvy. Okay. Anna did. Okay. I said Amina, I'm sorry, it was Anna. Oh, okay. Right. That's okay. Oh, uh, yeah, Anna, you can also ask us live if you have a question. Can it, um, no. Am I supposed to bring down the temperature on the EOC? Not yet, yes. not yet. We're still sauteing it at this medium heat. We'll bring it down when we, uh, after the water has boiled later. And then Wait, mine looks so brown. Yours doesn't look brown. Mine got dark. Oh. Okay. What meats are you using, Anna? Chicken. Chicken as well? Okay. Oh, maybe you can adjust it, Anna. Ours isn't, it's okay. It's still like. It's just, it's just, like 
So obviously, if you're using chorizo, it has its own oil, right? <laughs> so it's going to add to um, your oil base here. Right. And then um, there will be certain differences in the time of our meats being cooked because it also depends on the amount. We actually, um, we have two cups of chicken. We have a whole pound of chicken. So that's quite a bit. And like he mentioned earlier, we're using more than a cup of diced onions. That's probably why ours is not as brown, Anna. Okay, so uh, I could see that my chicken is now um, slightly cooked and that's how I want it. Okay, so at this point, we are going to add our broth. So one and a half cup of broth and one and a half cup of uh, coconut milk. Mm -hmm. Our coconut milk is already 13 and a half ounces. So this is approximately one and a half cups already. So you won't measure it anymore. So I won't measure okay. it anymore. So again, you can e use a beef stock or a chicken stock or a vegetable stock, up to you. Now we have friends who actually are ketogenic in their diet, okay? I wanna tell you, this is actually phenomenal even without any type of rice. All you have to do is double up on your meat and on your veggies, okay? And it's keto, okay, keto friendly, cool? Okay. The Valenciana camera keeps on shutting off, so I'll just keep it on the main camera. That's fine. So I'll have to just place this a little bit back. It's not charging this way. Yes. Okay. So I added my milk. I haven't added my broth yet or my chicken stock. So one and a half cups of this. That's okay, Mikael. Uh, thank you for letting us know. Our son is doing such a great job helping us, but we will try and make, you can try again um, later to, to focus on the Valenciana because I just fixed it. Oh, there, you can actually see there it now. Go. Yeah, I just fixed it. So this is uh, whatever you see in the camera uh, that- It got loose. That's fine. All right, uh, I added um, basically three cups of liquid, half of uh, chicken stock and half coconut oil. And then I'm gonna go ahead and close this and uh, allow it to boil. There you go. So this will take about five minutes um, until it boils. You're gonna want this to boil rapidly, okay? In the EOC. Mavic, I hope you're following along well. Hi Grace, go call. I would love to have your chef's son come cook for us one of these days. Hi, Lisa. Good to see you here. But anyway, okay, we're and transitioning. Mommy Lita, hello. Thanks for joining. We're transitioning. While we're waiting on this, Monique, for our crepes, here we go. If you're doing just one batch, then you're going to need only six pieces of eggs, right? But today, me, as always, because our kids are looking forward to this. They're like, we're making grapes, yay. Right, so what we're gonna do is we're going to simply add into our blender all our ingredients. But the trick, again, is if you've not seen me do this, is to layer it. Roy and Julie, we're going to layer it. So are you just doing one batch, six eggs? Okay, half of your eggs, so three, goes in first, Z first, Monique, Z first. In my case, double that, because <laughs> I'm making two batches. <laughs> One batch is not enough for my family, all right? So liquid first at the bottom. I'll be a little bit behind all of you because I have a lot of eggs to crack. Two. So after your three eggs at the bottom, you add in your arrowroot. How many have I cracked? Three. Four. Five. For me <laughs> at the bottom and then 
after adding the outer root, after your three eggs, add in everything else. Your oil, your milk, your sweetener of choice, a pinch of salt, okay? Everything else after the outer root and on top of those, the three other pieces of eggs, the rest of the eggs, okay? So if you notice, we're simply layering it. We've made sure there's liquid at the bottom in the form of the three eggs. And then you put your outer root right after and all the other liquid on top, okay? Because if you don't do it that way, if you put all your outer root at the bottom, it's not gonna mix properly. If you put your outer root on top, it's gonna explode on top of your blender lid and it's not gonna get into your liquid, see? I had to learn that the hard way, you guys. You're so lucky. <laughs> Barbie, I have a question. This is money. Okay, so I'm putting three eggs. I don't have the recipe. So how much arrowroot am I make putting okay. it? Um, you need one half of a cup of your arrowroot. Okay. And then two tablespoonfuls of your oil of any kind. Don't use avocado, okay? I want to tell people, for some reason, the flavor of avocado oil, I find to be strong for anything that's bread or crepe related. Okay. So you can use olive oil instead. I'm going to have to transition a little bit to the, okay, uh, to the uh, Valenciana. The liquid is boiling now for me. Is it boiling for you as well, Roy and Anna? Okay. Now we're going to add the rice and even it out, okay? Oh, it smells so good. It smells so good in here. I'm so excited to eat you all later. How much salt on the crepes, uh, Marvie? A pinch of salt, just a pinch, very little. And then one cup of your milk. Okay. Okay. Once you've evened out your rice, then you can, the water is still boiling, right? So go ahead and reduce your temperature now to 205. So that's simmer. That's a high simmer. 205. And then we are going to keep it simmering for about 20 minutes, okay? All right, so I'm down to 205 and I'm gonna cover it now. Okay, now we could focus on the crepes. <laughs> uh, uh, sorry, I missed what you said about what temperature do I bring it down to? 205, Anna. 205? Yes, it's a high simmer. 205, okay. Yeah, 205. Mm -hmm. Brian, Julie, 205, Mavic, 205, now that you've added your rice. Okay, so Monique, you're good. You've had added everything. All right. Half a cup of arrowroot, a cup of milk, oil, and salt. And sweetener. If you want to add some sweetener. You no may sweetener. Okay, there you go. And then add the rest of the eggs. The rest. Oh, of the so I'm going to put in a total of six eggs. Exactly. Okay. I'm doing the same thing right now for my crepes. I'm a little bit behind because I had to crack more eggs. And if you notice, this is what I'm using. I'm using, um, I'm actually using a lactose-free milk. Ta-da, do you see, do you no, see, there. Just there do you see there? Just perfect right I know, I'm, I'm showing it to them so. here. Hello, Celeste, thank you. Hi, Celeste. Hello, guys. Thank you for always doing this. Uh -huh. We have fun doing this, okay? So I'm a little bit behind. Look, I'm doing this, and then I'm gonna do my oil. So I'm using olive oil for ours, and instead of doing the whole four tablespoonfuls or one fourth cup of oil, I'm actually doing just half of it because when I start cooking this, our crepes, I wanna use butter. <laughs> oil overload, and unlike Monique, I'm actually using a sweetener. <laughs> if you don't know us, our favorite, every time, pure maple syrup. <laughs> Is there a way to make it stop cooking? Yeah. No. Okay. 
unless you lower your heat, okay? So there you go. And then I'm gonna add more of the eggs. And then Monique, if you're done with all of those things for your crepe, then you blend it, pulses just like five seconds. With that five seconds, stop, and then another five seconds, and you will see, it will be so fast. It will not even require three sets of five seconds. Okay, Roy, Julie? Okay. You One, can you just please clarify how much um, oil I need? Did you say two tablespoons? Yes, two tablespoons. Okay, okay, okay. just as a question, did you add milk? Yes, I did. I added milk. You add one cup of milk of your choice. Okay, thanks, Jessica. I don't know who asked that question. <laughs> Somebody. No, we did not add milk to the Valenciana. It's okay. <laughs> coconut oil. It's uh, coconut milk. We added <laughs> coconut milk. So in the Valenciana, sorry guys, we're cooking two dishes here. In the Valenciana, we used two cups of raw rice, right? So we had to, it's usually one and a half cups to one cup of rice. So what we did was one and a half cup of chicken stock and one and a half cup of coconut milk, okay? So that's what's needed for the Valenciana. Yes, it kind of looks the same, right? For the crepes, that's just regular milk. Of any kind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you want to use coconut milk, you can also use coconut milk, but not the cooking kind or it will be too heavy. Okay. It's better to use the cook the drinking kind of coconut milk. So what are the measurements? Again, sorry, for the Valenciana, we had actually sauteed uh, one onion and two tablespoons of garlic, okay? And then what we did next was we added in our chicken, one cup of chicken, one cup of chorizo. And then uh, once we had sauteed that meat and it's partially cooked, then we added the liquids. Again, it's one and a half cup of coconut milk, one and a half cup of chicken okay. stock. As soon as it hit boiling point and we added two cups of rice, now we're simmering it for 20 minutes. So I hope that gets you caught up if you just joined us. Thank you. Hello. Hi, John. We miss you. Okay. We'll be quiet for a little bit, okay? Because there's no um, muffler for this one. I'm going to do this now. Roy and Julie, are you done with the blending of your um, crepe mix? Monique, you're good. Yes, okay, now you have to preheat your skillet, whatever you're using. Are you using your EOC? No. If you're using a skillet, a regular anything on your stovetop, preheat that to medium now, okay? Preheat it to medium. I want to see the consistency of your mix. going to be very thin. The goal of using the blender is just to mix it faster. You actually are supposed to just whisk it by hand, but I found that using a blender is so much faster. <laughs> I used to do this by hand. See, look, it's perfect. Do you see that? It would have been hard to mix all of that cornstarch and all that liquid if you were doing that with a whisk. Okay, because mine was kind of watery and i thought okay that is that that okay it's very good watery, it's very thin That's okay it. all right i'm just gonna remove the blade so that only took like 10 seconds hello maggie malloy thanks for joining us huh that only took like 10 seconds do you see how fast okay and then in whatever skillet that you're using on your stove top, like I asked for Nate, you should preheat that to medium. And then when it's hot enough, you're going to lower the heat immediately after. And then you will use whatever oil that you have, or like I do a lot of times, this is what I always use, butter and a brush. Because when you do it this way, you actually use very little. You actually use very little. In fact, with this whole batch of crepe, I'll end up using not even a teaspoon full of butter, okay? It's pretty cool. So here, mine is already preheated. It's hot enough. How do you know it's hot enough, Monique? Julie, Mavic, you try to add some water. If it runs and beats, then it's hot enough. Oh, I was gonna use your glass there, honey. 
Can you see that? Ta-da! Mine is hot enough. Because it's hot enough like that, what I'm going to do now is lower my heat source to medium low. Okay? I'm lowering it to medium low. If you have a dial stove top, that's going to be about three. Anna, because you have your um, gas cooktop, put it just a little bit above the lowest, okay? Because gas cooktops tend to be hotter. And then I'm going to brush my butter. Ta-da, do you see how little? Hi, Happy Juvi, and hi, um, Hello, Eric, everyone. Erica Randall and Ben Samson. Thanks for joining us. Erica, seriously, last time you were like, can I come over? I want some food. And I said, you know what? Seriously, if you want to come over, we have food to share. <laughs> and then here's what I'm going to do as well. Another trick that I learned. I did not remove this, okay, the mixture and transfer it to any bowl. I am keeping it in a bowl and I'm using a measuring cup. You can use a one-fourth cup measuring tool or a one-third cup measuring tool. One-fourth is going to be thin like most crepes are, but I want it to be a little bit thicker, so I'm going to use a one-third measuring cup. You see? And then watch here. The trick here is on the wrist. You need to be able to flip this immediately. Jewel, Roy, are you ready? <laughs> Look, pour it in the middle and then swirl immediately. Ta-da! Swirl very gently. Put it back down. There's your crepe being cooked. <laughs> there you go. That's what we're going to keep doing. And then wherever your crepe mix is, just make sure that you somehow keep mixing it, okay, at the bottom because the arrowroot tends to settle at the bottom. There you go. Okay. So, uh, Mick, if you could turn to the main camera, there is one thing that I forgot to add. <laughs> we are supposed to add our turmeric and our paprika to the liquid. Uh so go ahead and get a little bit of liquid and dissolve this like in warm water uh, so that it can add color to your rice. Okay, that's the main purpose of this. So I'm gonna go I'll get, uh, get some hot water really quick. Okay. <laughs> Better late than never. I will try to um, talk to you in a little bit as far as substitutions for um, our spices for this Valenciana. Now, back to the crepe, please. Sorry, this is cooking on Yeah, steroids. so this is my paprika and uh, uh, as far as ratio, I only had one tablespoon of turmeric and one and a half of paprika, okay? I'm going to add it to my liquid uh, and uh, stir it a little bit. If you have saffron, go ahead and um, you know add it. add it as well. Do you see the consistency? You know that your crepe is ready to be flipped when it's really dry on top. Okay. You have to wait for it to be completely. There you go. Do you see that? Beautiful. <laughs> I cannot wait to eat. Hey, um, guys, I have a question. Um, my rice when I went to put the turmeric in, it looks like it's almost pretty dry. Do I need to add more liquid, or you think it's okay? You can add liquid and then you could mix it. Mine isn't completely dry yet. But be careful in the way you add them, Anna. I will go fourth of a cup slowly, okay? And then again, okay? So is everybody following along? <laughs> this is so much fun, isn't it? Good, money. Perfect. So when you flip your crepe, it will be so easy. It will be just like a few seconds on the other side because the actual cooking was done on the other side earlier. Yeah, oh, the camera's on me. So yeah, this is what I'm doing, guys. I'm just adding the color in. Um, but as you can see, my rice isn't completely done yet. It's an opportunity to add in, to mix in my meats as well, right? Okay, I got my first on the plate. Did everybody see this? Ta-da! There's your crepe, Monique. And then 
That's it, you guys. You just have to keep repeating the same thing for your crepes. Keep your temperature, um, your stovetop, your heat source at low. Okay, just a little bit above low. All right, Mikael, please go back to the camera for, for the Valenciana for that. Thank you. And I'll just keep doing. Yeah, the what I did, guys, was I added a little bit of saffron. Just so that the color will be richer. It smells so good. There you go. You can see that it's turned orange now, right? And we still have about eight more minutes before this rice is done. Do you see how fast that is? I used to shy away from making anything paella because I would always think it's too complicated. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and cover it back. I hope you guys are doing well. Are you following along? Everybody good? Leah Karubo and Meseret Lemma has joined us as well. Thanks for joining Hello. Facebook Live. We are making, um, well, coconut rice, you know, for lack of a better word, but it's arroz valenciana as far as what we typically call this recipe. It's a variation of paella, but we're using coconut milk and chicken stock instead of uh, tomato, tomato juice. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna move this a little bit. Everybody okay? Um, Mavic, are you okay? Red rice still hard and my paella is watery. I think I need to add more time. Yes. yes. Mavic, um, one of our cook longer today is actually using red rice. Red rice cooks so much longer. You're going to need almost double it's the time. It's almost like 40 minutes, Mavic, for yes, red rice. Yes, it's almost double the time because red rice is like brown rice. Yeah, and I don't know about the ratio to the ratio, feel free to adjust it. Normally how you cook your red rice, if it's two cups to one, please add more chicken stock, okay? Mm -hmm. Or uh, coconut milk. But if you also just do one and a half is to one, then you're fine. It's just that it takes longer, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's gonna take about 40 minutes for you. Right, and then what you can do Mavic is that you don't have to follow the 205 for your simmer. You might have to bring it up. To 250 for quite a bit until the water is a lot more evaporated okay and gone so there you go so just think of it mavic as cooking rice basically so uh feel free to adjust i i, I actually did the recipe based off glutinous rice so um i hope that uh, you'll be able to just adjust it right as marvi said if you bring it to a boiling point again make sure you, you, you drop it to simmer as soon as it hits boiling point because what's going to happen is your rice might get burnt at the bottom and you don't want that as well right okay so any other question monique you're doing well with your crepes good julie you're okay question what happened to the green peppers oh not yet we haven't not yet. Yet. okay so okay. as soon as our, our, as soon as our 20 minutes are, is up, then that's when we add our bell peppers, our green peas, and our shrimp, okay? Okay, thank you. Shrimp as well, okay? So Anna, you're okay? I have, a, I have a question too. For the crepes, how long are they supposed to stay there cooking? Oh, for as long as your top is already like um, dry and you flipped it on the other side, it's only about 10 seconds. It's fast. Oh. Uh, actual cooking happens on the first side as soon as you like um pour it on your skillet that's when the main cooking is done that's why you have to wait until the top is completely dry before you flip it it's just like to dry the other side cool Monique are you becoming an expert Mo absolutely I've eaten one already it's delicious <laughs> <laughs> you're eating while you're cooking yes I tend to do that, except that we're teaching the class. <laughs> oh, wait until um, wait till you added your feelings. It's so amazing. <laughs> All right. So while we're waiting on everything else, I'm gonna continue. I don't know if you guys see it, but I'm continually just making our crepes. Okay. 
because like I said, I did a double batch because our kids love this. And I'm using a one third cup measuring tool because I want it to be a little bit thicker. Okay. Now, Mikael, can you please bring me to the front? The main camera, please. Okay. Like promised, um, because we do have some people who are watching from the Philippines as well. I wanted to let you know, the main ingredient of um, Valenciana or paella, the yellow kind, is actually saffron. That is what gives it its most unique flavor, okay? Now, in the Philippines, even here in the United States, saffron is pretty expensive, right? <laughs> Did you notice I only used a very little bit? <laughs> <laughs> saffron can be pricey, so if you don't have saffron, here are the best um, substitutes, okay? On top of the list will be, um, flavor-wise, it's cardamom. It is the closest flavor to saffron, but it does not have the color, right? It doesn't have the yellow color of saffron. So if you want to add the yellow color, you can have or you can add turmeric to the cardamom. Okay, there will be another kind of flavor, which I particularly don't mind, but that will be a combination of cardamom and just a little bit of turmeric so it doesn't overpower the flavor of the cardamom. Those two will be a good substitute for saffron. Okay, and then the other thing, which is actually the closest as far as color and even flavor is, is the soft flour. Okay, soft flour. Um, in the Philippines, they're trying to say that what they have that's called kasubha is safflower or saffron of the Philippines. It's not the same. Kasubha is more with a color, but flavor-wise, it hardly does anything. So if you want to use kasubha in the Philippines, <laughs> add paprika. And the best kind of paprika to put in your paella is the smoked kind. Cool? I hope I've given you um, all the tips possible, all right? Okay, now there it's time go. for us to add our bell peppers and our green peas. There you go. Uh, I will not be adding my shrimp yet just because shrimp cooks so fast. So I'm just gonna uh, add my bell pepper. And it really adds a pretty color to this dish. So feel free to be creative. I was supposed to make a sun, I'm not thinking. You try to be creative. Yeah. Well, as creative as I can be. <laughs> I'm not the most creative person. Our daughter is, um... all right, everybody. Do you see this? Now, um, there's a very specific reason why we decided to share how to make the Valenciana with all of you. Like I said in the invite, this is one dish that is so good for leftovers because um, the longer that it kind of like, everything simmers in the juices and in the flavors, the longer you keep it, okay? And that's very intentional, why? Because Honestly, who among you guys look forward to the leftovers from Thanksgiving? Majority of us don't, right? <laughs> but this one, you're going to want leftovers of this one. We're almost done. Anna, you're doing good? Is it dry now? Perfect. Mave, how is it going with you, okay. lady? Green peas. Yeah, my rice is actually cooked. So I had to taste it to make sure that it was good. Um, you guys can add a little bit of chicken stock if you feel like it's too hard still. You see those color, the colors? Turns out beautiful, right? Later on, we'll mix this all together. Let's cover, let's go ahead and cover this for about another 10 minutes. Then we'll add our shrimp. Or I don't know if we have enough time. So it's 5.48. We'll just do about uh, eight minutes on this, okay. At 225? No, this is still at 205. Okay. This is still 205, just a high simmer. Mm -hmm. Perfect. 
So Monique, I know my friend Monique has been eating. So here's what I'm gonna do. This crepe, if you did not use any sweetener like Monique did not, then that's perfect for your savory crepes, right? And you can pretty much use whatever for your fillings. This is our favorite, okay? You saute some garlic with some tomatoes. Either you cook your tomatoes or you don't, just dice tomatoes and some, sprinkle some basil, whether dried or fresh. Tomato, garlic, basil combination with crepe is phenomenal. We used to go to this fancy place in the Philippines in Manila when we were dating. He would take me there. To the Ross Valley one? Yes. Okay. The crepe yeah. place. And that combination with the crepe was so expensive. That was our special date. <laughs> it was, it, it, we can't do it all the time because it was so and, pricey. And in that same place, by the way, there was paella negra. Paella negra is like black paella, mm -hmm. squid which uses squid ink. And so that place had a lot of creative dishes. Mm -hmm. Um, I had a question earlier from Grace, if we could use basmati rice. Um, yes, but it's not the same. So the difference is basmati rice, Grace, after you, if you notice, we waited until the water was boiling before we dropped in the rice. It's gonna, um, it's gonna cook as individual grains, right? So your paella will not exactly look like a paella. It will taste like, oh, sorry, valenciana. It will taste like valenciana, but it will almost be like, um, what do they call that? The Indian dish? The the basmati rice, the one that's like uh masala? No, 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 no. Biryani. Uh, biryani. Yeah, biryani. it's biryani. It will turn out to be like biryani grace. So uh I would use the round rice. Um or jasmine is actually fine because mm -hmm. uh, it still cooks mm -hmm. kind of like that sushi kind of uh texture. Right. So while we're waiting on that, Mikael. You don't have to move cameras. Um, here's how what I'm gonna do though, okay? Because tonight we're using our crepes for dessert. I am a convert to sunflower butter because of my friend there, Anna. <laughs> here's what I'm gonna do. This is how I like my crepe. I'm gonna add some sunflower butter and I'm gonna slice some bananas. Honey, can we move this? I'm about to. Oh, sure. This thing is about okay, to. Okay, I'm already done with my ingredient plate here. I'm really just left with my lemon wedges, so we'll do that later on. All right, and then I have a banana. Banana. Here's how I make my dessert crepe. I want to show you all. Slice it on top. I like doing it this way. I know um, in usual preparate, prepar I don't know how to pronounce it. A place is where you get crepes. <laughs> they usually do the triangle. I like doing it this way because I like um, the bananas spread out more evenly. I have a hard time doing that when it's a triangle, okay? And then I simply, honey, can you fold it and roll? I'm gonna grab my... Uh... You want it to roll completely? Yes, like that. Okay. Okay, there. There you go. Then, it looks like uh, not yet. It looks like a lumpia. And then here's what I do. <laughs> I have my <laughs> I have my cream. This is how I do it. This is how I like it. And then I don't use Nutella. The it's, kids they it's, like it's, the Nutella, the you're, hazelnut you're, you're spread. Just, that, 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 that. Oh, sorry. And then I do this. I use um, chocolate syrup. Oh, it's thick in different places. There you go. See, here's my dessert. Here, Mikael, you wanna show it? And the camera? There you go. Yum. Are we gonna have strawberries? You see? A lot of a protein, <laughs> everything organic, <laughs> and sunflower butter. Yum! <laughs> I can have this for breakfast, for real. And then, and honey, is that sunflower butter non-dairy? Sunflower, yeah, is non-dairy. 
It's yeah, not it's dairy? Just, wow. Mm -hmm. It's like almond butter too, but except they use a sunflower. Here you go, honey. Make your own. Make your own. And no, sometimes... I'm, about, I'm watching this because I'm about to do that. Oh. So sometimes all I add to this, when I do the triangle, I just add cinnamon. I like sprinkle cinnamon and then powdered sugar. <laughs> and that is my cinnamon crepes. See, Anna can have that, right? There you go. And I have some strawberries. How's your, how's your Valenciana doing? Is yours done, Anna? It's good. Kind of drying, getting dry already. Getting there. Okay. Mavic, how are you doing? Oh, it's, good. it's still a little wet. It's still wet. Okay, you need but to. It's totally cooked, so I had to add a little bit more broth. Okay, then you could probably increase it to 225 or something just so that it evaporates. Roy, that looks really good. Is your rice okay or is it still not as cooked? Uh, it's a little undercooked. So I'm keeping it on long, a little bit longer. Okay, sounds good. I am going to add my shrimp now. So I don't know if you guys are using mussel or chop, but it's time to add your seafood. It only takes about eight to 10 minutes to cook that until it turns pink. So I'm gonna add my little pieces of shrimp because I'm gonna budget it. And that's all that everybody's getting. So colorful and beautiful. I know. Yeah, I look at the Wow. Can you show our There. Look. <laughs> That's nice. Later on, the shrimp will turn pink, and so it'll add to the beauty of it. But I'm going to mix it all together and show you guys once we plate it. Are we going to bring up a temperature from 205 to 225 or 250? I think we should. Mm. So we can finish on time. Okay. I'm going to cover that. I'm going to bring up my temperature to 225, okay? But that should be enough time. All right. Okay, let's put a timer on for seven minutes. I have my timer on. Oh, we have the end timer on. You are right. It's really hard. What? Julie, were you talking to us? <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to know if somebody is talking to us. Yeah, what was it, Jill? <laughs> oh. Honey, can you please grab cone number four? Now, I'm going to show you something really fancy, fancy. Can you grab cone? Oh, I'll do it. Cone number four. Okay, I'm going to make another crepe. But this time, I'm going to do hmm, strawberries. And what I did, Anna, is... um. I got some strawberries um, and froze them a little bit for like 15 minutes, okay? Because I'm gonna use the cutter, okay, this one. Here's the strawberries that I placed in a Ziploc bag and then I threw into the freezer for about 15 minutes. This, this is kind of frozen, but not too much, okay? I'm gonna put it in here. Anna, you can do this some other time because you have the processor. And then I just push it down. Look. <laughs> Yum! And then this goes on top of my crepes too, Monique. Do you see that? Yummy. So fresh fruits with your crepes. See, do you want to make some for yourself? Mm, no, because I'm focusing on my paella. <laughs> <laughs> I'm focusing on my He's Valenciana. A, he wants to make sure this Valenciana works. I cannot works. multitask. <laughs> that is funny. Okay, here you go. See? You guys, did you see how fast that was? I'm showing you all the tricks of my trade. <laughs> there you go. See, Winnie? Um, strawberries that were frozen for like 10, 15 minutes in the freezer cut up. And then it's also going to go to one of my crepes. Do you want me to move this out now? Mm -hmm. Let me just get everything. So I have a question. So I cooked the chicken in the cube chicken at first, but it wasn't totally cooked through. But because it's been sitting in that pan, it'll have cooked through by now, right? Exactly. Yes. 
we, we, we intentionally partially cook it only at the beginning. Yes, you don't necessarily cook it through in the beginning, Anna. So that the flavors will add in as well. Okay, we're gonna make one more crepe, this time with strawberries. Okay, how does, Anna, how will you make this with strawberries? Tell me, I'll make it for you. Maybe you should come to my house and get some. We can call Francesca, neighbors. Francesca's good. Oh, Francesca? <laughs> oh, but she's working. Yeah, Francesca is a crepe queen. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Vicky. Hi, Edwin and Jojo. Thank you for joining. All right. My daughter is a crepe queen. So here, when most um, places would do the triangle or just the half folded one like that. Okay. So what I'm going to do is actually combine strawberries and banana. So this is going to be your strawberry banana crepe. But this time... Do we use hazelnut or not? No. Oh, okay. you can use it for later. You can make a third one. But this is the beauty of crepes, you guys. It is so versatile that for your holidays, what you can do is make tons of crepes and then just grab all the toppings possible and create a crepe bar mm -hmm. to each his own, right? Mm -hmm. I love things that are versatile like that because um, before pandemic... <laughs> We used to eat a lot together, <laughs> yeah, <especially laughs> which we miss. <laughs> I think we can still do that right now, right? Virtually, um, we'll all just like, eat our crepes together. <laughs> no, we're so close to each other. We can go to each other's house yeah. and bring food. <laughs> yeah, it's so easy. Fold it in like that and then grab some. Y-O-C night, bring your own crepe. Bring your own crepe. <laughs> No, 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 uh, no. Yeah, really? Okay, so just half folded like that. My husband is trying to make my crepe. I thought you said one fourth. I was trying to put it all no, in. No, 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 no. Half way like that. I changed my mind. There you go. And then you top it with the strawberries. What else do you want with it, honey? I told you to make it yourself. Uh, I typically like um, hazelnut. Uh, and banana. Spread. Yeah, Nutella. Yeah, the rest of my family, they like um, hazelnut spread, the Nutella. I try to stay away from it. <laughs> it's not the healthiest. I'm sorry. The company who makes it might ban me. But anyway, there you go. And then, as usual. Yay, look at this. Nutella. This, this feels like Christmas whenever there's Nutella. Yeah. Strawberry banana. See, do you want this? Mm, yeah, you can later. Okay, what else do you guys want with your strawberry banana crepe? We have to put chocolate sauce on top. Yeah, add some chocolate sauce. It will look good. Ooh, chocolate sauce or chocolate chips? Ah. Ooh, Ooh, chocolate chips. That's a thought. There you go. We're going to grab some chocolate chips. Moving around my shrimp, I'm gonna flip it over now because it's not cooking as fast as I wanted to. All right, everybody, Mikael, can you please um, don't show me, don't show my paella yet because it's not yet done. <laughs> oh, my Mikael, here you go. The other crate. Okay, do you see that? Yeah. Who wants to come eat this. We have so much food, you guys. <laughs> this is awesome. Okay. Anna and I will jump in our cars and show up. We're not that far away. That's true. <laughs> when are you done cooking your crepe? How many did you end up with um, that batch? I made three. Only three. three? Oh, no, no. I still have. It's just me here, Marvy. Oh, okay. So, you did not I didn't make all of them. Okay. Yeah. But I yeah, I have plenty. I have plenty left for tomorrow. Perfect. Sometimes, Monique, what I do is I cook everything and, and then I just keep it in the fridge so I don't have to cook it again. It actually ah. is okay because it keeps for about a week in your regular refrigerator. Oh, 
Oh, okay. Freeze it, but I never. <coughs> it. It's always gone. It doesn't take two days, three days. It's gone. <laughs> yes. So you can actually cook everything and keep it in your fridge for like a week. Okay. Okay. I use some of the fig spread inside uh -huh. that we bought yeah, at the perfect. Amish place. Perfect. See, you can use anything. I was when I was young. We used to have these crepes, and and um, I thought we could use like whole like a, the Greek yogurt, and mm. um, and then put like blueberries on it or something, or just a little bit of lemon and sugar. So I don't know. I think that makes a little. Exactly, honey. You want to make the very simple cinnamon and sugar, powdered sugar, just to show them while we're waiting on your stuff. Um. Okay, I need to know where they're located. <laughs> Look at all this yummy goodness. Look, everyone. <laughs> this sort before anything. Oh, your your boys, Anna. They're gonna want some. Okay, I, I bought a bunch of stuff. I bought the chocolate syrup and the whipped cream and, and bananas. I got tonight, yeah. Oh, by the way, everybody, Monique, including you, please take a photo of your food with yourself. Okay, I guess I'll have to make another one. Okay. <laughs> oh, because you ate everything. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's really good, isn't it? Yes. Very okay. tasty. Eating it. You were just like smiling. Was the whole time. No, I was eating and watching you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have our powdered oh. sugar, but I don't know how to spread it. Though. It's all here, honey. Oh, Marvin had it all prepared. Yes, I'm okay. ready. I'm um, a Girl Scout. All right. So I guess you just wanted me to sp sprinkle yeah, cinnamon. Do a, yeah, do a uh, fourth. And you can do the triangle as well if you want. You know what I've seen where they spray the um, whipped cream in the middle and then fold it over and just the whipped cream is oozing out of the ends. That's very pretty. Ooh. Hey, why did you do that to yourself? Do you have whipped cream now? No. <laughs> Hi, Vicky. Thank you for joining us. Oh, I like the way Chad folded that. Oh, nice. Okay. That's yeah, a, the triangle. That's a this guy's, how I usually that's eat. a guy's yes. Not too much art in it, but. No, this is yeah. how I usually eat my crepes. <laughs> Just uh, the, the cinnamon powder and the powdered sugar. And then sometimes you can never go wrong with anything chocolate, right? <laughs> yeah, look. This is pretty enough, but then when you use this, even more so. Just a little. This is how I actually like mine. Very simple, without all the fancy stuff. The way Chad folded that looks very Parisian. There okay, you know. it's time to mix See? our paella. Okay, Mikael, if you could uh, show the camera here now and show our uh, paella, uh, show our, sorry, I keep on saying paella, show our Valenciana. Valenciana. And it's okay. I am going to go ahead and mix it now. So I wonder if a lot of people are actually um, traveling for um, the holidays. We do have a few of our friends who are traveling, right? Just be careful, you all out there, wherever you may be. Um, this virus has become very challenging for all of us, but it should not keep us from spending time with family, right? Especially, just be careful, please. And ta-da, your side dish for Thanksgiving is ready. It's not a side dish. Or whatever, it's the main dish. <laughs> and the turkey, the turkey is the main dish, right? And um, so when we plate it, we typically just, uh, okay, of course, you want to make sure that somebody gets the shrimp, right? This is actually a one dish meal, right? You don't need anything else if you have this. It has everything. 
There you go. Okay. And then uh, serve it. Go ahead and serve it with a couple of uh, wedges of lemon. There you go, Anna. That's how you will enjoy your Valenciana tonight. And uh, there you go. So that's it. Right? So, um, main camera, please. How's everybody doing? Yeah, we're we just, just going to do our obligatory. Um, <laughs> we want to do the rounds to show everybody. Rounds. This is our, right, it's done. Just show us how your food is um, going so far, Mikael. Can we please start with Roy? And spotlight Roy and Julie. Let's see how they're doing. There you Ooh. go. Let me see. Let me see again, again, again. I did not see it. What's up? Uh, what rice did you use? Sorry. Oh, look at the crepe. My goodness. So good. The crepe is loaded. What, That's awesome. what rice did you use, Roy? Uh, glutinous rice. Glutinous rice. I'll see. Okay. We so were you able to catch up? Was it, did it cook properly? Yeah. Okay, we great. We put some shrimps and the Spanish chorizo. Awesome. Right. Well, take photos. Okay, you guys always present it the best. Yeah, they're really good at plating. Okay, next, Anna, how are you? How did you do, my friend? Let's see your food. I'm so excited for you all's dinner tonight. Tell us how Kevin likes it. <laughs> we used all those ingredients. I had to make it a little different. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh, that yes. looks good. Is that base? Yeah. Like cilantro? cilantro. I did cilantro. You like cilantro? Awesome. Thank you. Let us know how you like it, Anna. I will. It looks good. And then Monique. I ate. I ate mine already. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing to show. Uh, Mavic <laughs> said she needs a little more time with her red rice, which we understand. So Mavic, just take a lot of take your time and then you can send us a photo later. Mm -hmm. Mavic, did you make the crepes by any chance? Crepes or crepes, okay? This is kind of like, I'm confusing for most. Hey, I know we're going over time. I kind of did say we're going to be like 10 to 15 minutes over our usual hour today, okay? That's fine. Mavic, did you make crepes at all? I don't know. Did she say yes or no? Um, I don't know yet. Uh, Roslyn Molina, hi. All right, so it's time to taste our Valenciana. Taste test. Anna, please taste your Valenciana. If you can, let us know how you like it. You know what's good too is if you um, add a dash of hot sauce, right? Ooh, not me. Not you, but me, yes. <laughs> or red pepper flakes. Okay, there you go. Is it good? Just enough? So good. You guys, I'm doing my happy dance because it's so good. Monique, come over if you want to play. It's, it's good. It is mm, so good. I love it. The coconut is just perfect. Come. All right. Bring a bowl. <laughs> We will we'll do our sacrifice thank off. <laughs> I'll, I'll bring a bowl and take a bowl. This time, Mavic, okay. But please do let us know how your um, Valenciana turned out, okay? Please um, snap a photo with you in it. All so, right? Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Thank you for thank cooking you so with much. us tonight. And I hope that this dish will make it to your Thanksgiving table. Yes, I <laughs> or hope Christmas. you guys like it enough that you're going to make it again. Mm -hmm. But thank you, Monique. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Roy and Julie. Thank you, Mavic. Thank you, Mavic. Hey, where's Roy and Julie? Can we please go back to Roy and Julie? Tell us how you I like think, it. I think they're off screen now. I need to move the camera. Sorry, what was that again? Sorry, Marbs. Oh, I want to know if how you like the taste of the Valenciana. Have you tried it yet? It's good, yeah. Perfect. Okay. Well, thank you so much once again for being with us. Look forward to cooking with you again next week. Um, surprise, surprise. Next week's cooking class, even though it's Thanksgiving weekend, we'll be here. And you know what we'll be featuring, Anna? Leftovers. Leftovers? <laughs> no, but we're going to do something with the leftovers. We're going to teach you how to best 
um, cook, recook your leftovers, okay? Mm -hmm. We're going to feature your leftovers with fried rice, different ways. The chorizo, okay? the chorizo is so good. Mm -hmm. Good night, everybody. Happy, happy Thanksgiving. Have fun with your dinner. Happy Let turkey. us know. Happy Turkey Day. Take care. Bye. Bye, Anna. Bye. Thank you all.